Guys, we have a Goodman heat pump here on a trailer. As you see down there, there's our Goodman SSZ, if you can see it, that we set last year. This one's not cooling. We're going to find out why. This is actually one of my favorite machines. This is a General Electric electric furnace. I believe it's from 1982. I replaced a blower on it a few years ago, but evidently she's having a problem where the outdoor unit is. She's a little loud. There we go. Oh, we gotta just tip it back a little bit. Something's rubbing down there, but you feel there's no refrigerant passing through the pipe, so we're gonna go outside and see what's going on. There it is right there. There's our instrument area, our control area. We have our defrost board at the top. We have another side of our capacitor, which we'll be checking. Down here in the midst of wires, we have our contactor, and then our low voltage connections right there. So let me get that capacitor freed up and see if that's the problem. As you can see, our capacitor is 37.9 microfarads. It's 40 slash five. On the other side, we have 4.2. It's maybe a little bit weak, but not too bad at all. But it seems like this compressor might be having a problem. We're probably going to go with a hard start to see if we can get it locked up or get it broken free and put a new capacitor on there anyway, even though it's not that weak. Just a little bit over 2 microfarads, a little bit more on the fan side with 0.8 microfarads out of 5. It's a little bit more of a deficiency there. But just because we might be having some trouble with the compressor, I might replace it just for, just for shits and giggles, just to make sure. Everything squared away trying to start this piece of junk compressor. I have my 521 over here, but before I do that, I'm going to check and make sure that none of our wires are burned off at the compressor. I'm going to sort of ohm them out from up here at the control cabinet. If they all ohm out okay, I know the wires aren't burned off. We can try it again. And if we do have an issue, we'll investigate further by taking the top off and going to the compressor. Okay, I put my ohm meter on three wires. Start, which is yellow on this Goodman unit. Run, which is red common which is black windings on the compressor they add up ohms are in the normal range a plus b equals c start to common plus run to common should equal start to run that's the case so i'm going to move on and try to get a hard start on this thing see if we can get it broken free here's my hard start dangling outside the unit the reason that is because it doesn't fit up here and i'm going to test it real quick before i permanently install it on the inside, maybe on the back of the control panel facing downward or somewhere I can hide it from the weather because it does not fit inside of the control cabinet. And I don't carry two wires, I just carried a three wire. So, Alright guys, I'm going to start this thing up and see if it actually turns on or what. I tried this once and it didn't start. We're going to try it again. There's my dangling hard start. And keep in mind, this is a three ton machine. That's a little bit more powerful. This is my four and five ton hard start because I just used up my last three ton. I just want to see if we can get this thing started. Nah. I'll try it again. She's toast, buddy. She's locked up like a bitch. I'm recovering my refrigerant out of the old Goodman here. Help of the Hillmore gauges. I'm weighing it, taking a weight of it. I want to see how much comes out of it. Make sure that we actually have enough refrigerant. See if there's any leaks over the years. We didn't do a leak test on this one, but the unit's so old, I'm just curious. I may have actually required less than the factory charge to charge it because there's a 1982 General Electric slant coil on the other end of this which would present a little bit of an issue charging because it's just a strange matchup. Look down on my old compressor down there and it looks bent up at an angle. It's kind of strange, it's kind of kicked up like this. Huh. I don't know, it's kind of a weird one. But we're about to take it out, the, the uh, recovery's almost over. So we're gonna take that out, take the dryer out, put a straight piece of pipe there, move the dryer to the outside, perhaps, depending on how much room we got out here. We're in a whole lot, so we'll see. We'll replace it, I promise. I don't know if you guys can see that, but that's five pounds, 5.25 ounces, which is a little bit less than the factory charge, but more than I was anticipating, so that's good. Maybe we actually do have a proper charge in this machine. We're still going. I replaced the contactor while we were waiting, single pole contactor. I'll put my crankcase heater off either end of this pole of the contactor, so it'll be online 
whenever the system is not operational. Electrical voltage will come through on this other side, pass through the motor windings, so we'll get 240 volts across the contactor and it will power up the crankcase heater when the system is off. When it turns on, this switch will close, there'll be no voltage potential here, and the crankcase heater will shut off. Guys, I'm looking down here at the last two studs from the compressor. They were jammed in there and bent, so I had to actually cut them off with the grinder to get the compressor out. I'm going to try to shave them off close if I can. If not, they're going to stay as they are and just kind of help steady the compressor while the back two hold the compressor in. Hopefully I can get them out without damaging the threads. But someone has bent this thing up pretty good. You can see. But kind of a mangled up mess, so I'm going to try to straighten it out. A piece of 3 8 copper replacing where the dryer went. I'm going to place the dryer outside here in a moment. We'll go ahead and get this in place before the compressor gets in place. So it'll be a little bit easier to break. New compressor in. It is a Copeland replacement for the Bristol. The piping is a little bit different, so I turned it 90 degrees. And I made a couple bends to meet up my hot discharge line, discharge gas line, and suction gas line coming back in. It uh, ended up pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and solder this up, flowing nitrogen, and then I'll put the dryer in outside the unit. Got my compressor sweated in. Have our dryer in as well. I'm going to wrap this little crankcase heater around. It kind of just clamps around it and holds tight. And feed the wires on there with the compressor wires. Make sure we keep them away from the discharge line. Charging up our 407C here in liquid. The liquid line. I'm going to get to about 5 pounds. Stop it. Pull the vacuum. The vacuum did not go stellar. It took an extremely long time to get down to an 1,000 micron range, but we didn't even quite get there. So I'm concerned that there might be a pinhole, very small leak in some other part of the system. But we will see. These are our pressures after about six and three quarter pounds of R407C. Our airflow is in range, but I'm guessing that we are still a little low on airflow. Obviously, our targets are a little higher than our. 65 pounds and our superheat's about right where it should be although we might add a little bit more gas but if you combine a 2002 10 seer with a 1982 slant coil that's probably eight or six seer it's not going to end up perfect but we've gotten it close enough where it'll cool and it's not freezing or anything like that keeping in mind that this is 407C, not 22, so the temperatures are a little bit different. It's not too bad for an old mix-match system here. Final pressure is just a little bit lower than target, but not too bad. Superheat a little bit lower than target. Not too bad.